I'm Charles Scott King, WNEW News. At nine minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of adventure with Richard Widmark as your host. Here's a preview. A whiteout is headed for Keyhole Basin, Mr. Haverly. I'd like your permission to delay operation on all our lifts until the whiteout danger passes. Well, this is an early morning eye-opener, even for an old man like me. Oh, I think a whiteout would open any ski resort owner's eyes, Mr. Haverly. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Safety Vision, a quick and easy method for observing potential hazards in your home. Let's start by activating your safety scan. Methodically, focus on your hair dryer. Is the dryer mistakenly plugged in while not in use? Is it in a position where it could possibly fall into water and be a shock hazard? And is the dryer grill free of lint and hair? This time, focus on your electric food preparing appliances. Are they out of the reach of young children? And check that the appliance cord does not hang over a table edge or counter. Next, your safety scan should include checking all electrical appliances for an indication that the product design has been evaluated by safety engineers and complies with a nationally recognized safety standard. To do this, check for the UL label on the appliance. A public service message on behalf of Underwriters Laboratories and this station. This is Richard Widmark. the sound of a United States Forest Service artillery team clearing an avalanche in the Colorado Rocky Mountains. The sound waves of the blank artillery shells loosen the stressed snow. At express train speed, the avalanche plows down its time-worn path. High winds blow in the avalanche's wake. World War I military commanders in the Italian Alps first discovered that avalanches could be triggered by artillery fire. But the myriad variables involved make exact avalanche prediction a thing of the future. Temperature, the steepness of the mountain slope, any rapid change in weather conditions, the rate of snowfall, even the crystal formation of the snow itself are all determining factors in avalanche prediction. At Colorado's Keyhole Basin Ski Resort, Ski Patrol Captain Skip Blanchard and team member John Titus collect resistograph readings on the resort's one possible avalanche slope. Well, the shaft struck the bottom of the snowpack, Skip. Okay, let's withdraw the shaft. The resistograph will record the slope strength to load pressure. Uh, strength to load pressure reads four to one. This slope's a regular rock of Gibraltar. Oh, yeah. For today, anyway. Skip doesn't realize how closely his remark attends tomorrow's radical weather change. Within 24 hours, a raging blizzard, a whiteout, will lock into the Keyhole Basin Ski Resort, dumping enough wet snow to reduce the slope's strength to load pressure to one to one. The whiteout guarantees Keyhole Basin's first unpredicted avalanche. And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Whiteout, by Bruce Martin. Our stars, Joan McCall and Linda K. Henning. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. And now a special message of interest to shoppers across America from Sears. Everybody has been talking about inflation... Well, here's what Sears is helping to do about it. Starting the 1st of May, all prices in Sears Spring General Catalog will be reduced 5%.
This means a discount of 5% will automatically be taken off the price of anything and everything you order from the Spring General Catalog between May 1st and July 31st, 1979. Also beginning in May, Sears retail stores across the nation will reduce their regular price of selected items, which means you can expect even greater values. In addition, for limited periods of time, Sears will sharply reduce the price on scores of items in our retail stores. Watch for these Sears super values on TV, radio, and magazines, and your local paper, and you'll benefit from price cuts each month. Everyone wants to control inflation. These are some of the ways Sears is helping to do it. Sears, where America shops for value. Strawberries! Stoneware with hand-painted strawberries! 45-piece set plus extra serving bowl! Sears Strawberries! Sears hand-painted strawberry stoneware has delectably sweet country looks. And durable, this dishwasher-safe stoneware resists chipping, cracking, or fading, even when exposed to your oven, freezer, or microwave oven. Enhance your table with these pretty strawberries from Sears. Strawberries! Sears stoneware with hand-painted strawberries! At most larger Sears retail stores. The gray clouds which deposited snow all night on the Keyhole Basin slopes promise more during the day as the ski lifts begin running. But not too many of the resort skiers complain. The thought of fresh powder compensates for the lack of sunshine. Two people who are complaining are Ski Patrol Captain Skip Blanchard, because the large accumulation of overnight snow demands a new avalanche watch, and pretty beginner skier Cindy Markick. Cindy had driven up to the Rocky Mountain Ski Resort with her Denver University roommate, Lisa Adams. During the hour-long drive from Denver, Lisa had glowingly promised Cindy fun, a tan, and look-alike Robert Redford instructors. As the young women remove their rented skis from their car rack, Cindy can see that the threatening gray clouds rule out any tans today. What about the ski instructors? What about them? Well, where's the surplus of Greek gods you promised? Do they sleep in on overcast days like today? Cindy, give me a break. We aren't even out of the parking lot yet. Did you expect valet service from the parking lot to the slope? I expect what you promised. A little sun, maybe even a first-degree tan, and meeting some hot ski instructor I can write the folks back home about. <laughs> Is that asking too much? I'd settle for a full day of skiing, sun or no sun. I know what you'd settle for. Well, it's like I always say. Some of us are better at some things than the rest of us. Hey, remember, you promised to stick with me on the beginner slope. I didn't promise to babysit you the whole day. You promised to teach me how to ski. It's only my second time skiing, and uh, I'm nervous. But I didn't promise to stay with you the whole day. When I spend $12 on a lift ticket, I like to get in some serious skiing. If I knew you'd planned to abandon me, I would have spent the day at Penrose Library researching Dr. Dawson's marketing paper. I wouldn't have had to get up at 5 in the morning either. <laughs> Nobody's abandoning you. Knowing you, after 10 minutes on the beginner slope, some panting golden boy will whistle over to criticize your form and offer his 10 years of snowplow experience. Of course, uh, as my best friend and only roommate, you won't ski off on me until I find a golden boy I'd enjoy spending the rest of my day skiing with. Oh, brother, do you drive a hard bargain? I took Marshall's course in sales closing last semester. Deal? Deal. <laughs> It's hot fast. John, that's a dumb way to test a hot iron. Yeah, but it's great on finger burns. Well, what you should do is let the iron heat up, then apply your wax directly to the iron. Skip, I've been waxing skis for a long time, okay? I bet you burnt your finger quite a lot, too. Yeah, well, I should... Yeah. Hmm, something coming in on the shortwave. I'll get it. Calling station K2XCD. Over. Station K2XCD, Keyhole Basin Ski Patrol. Want a tip on the weather, pal? Stay indoors. Big Red, how's my favorite Indian at the National Weather Service these days? My heart is heavy, and it's not from eating too much of your white ice fried foods. We're tracking a storm system moving fast out of the northwest. A whiteout, Skip. Gale force winds with enough snow to fill Rhode Island and zero visibility, and thought you ought to know. Definitely. Thanks for the shout. Is the whiteout headed for Keyhole Basin? Over. 
Not at the moment, but it's a 10-mile front, and we can't pinpoint a declared route yet. How's your avalanche watch? Over. Keyhole has only one avalanche slope. In the mall between our barrel run experts and beginner slopes, John and I measured the slope strength to load pressure at four to one yesterday. Good. Even with last night's six-inch accumulation, your mall avalanche slope is in a stable condition. I'll holler back at you if the whiteout swings your way. Oh, we'd appreciate that. Especially since this whiteout is dropping so much snow. I've seen slopes avalanche under as little as two to one pressure. I'll catch you later, Red. Oh, I sure hope we don't catch that whiteout. Too much excitement for me. You and me both. Do me a favor. I'm not waxing your skis for you. <laughs> no. Hustle me a Danish from the coffee shop. I haven't had breakfast yet, and the lips don't open for another 20 minutes. All right. But I want those skis waxed by the time I get back. Aye, aye, Captain. Apple, if they got it. <gasps> Cover your mouth when you yawn. <sighs> My, what a strong sense of propriety you have. Have another cup of coffee. It'll help wake you up. Another cup of coffee will send me running back to the bathroom again. Cindy, there's a table full of guys sitting behind us. Boys, don't go to the bathroom. <sighs> mm, this girl sure does. <gasps> oh, baby. Oh, look out! Uh, oh, I didn't see you. You stepped on my Danish. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it all right? <laughs> <laughs> no. I tried to warn you, Cindy, but you walked right into him. Well, I'm not responsible. I was yawning. We'd be happy to buy you another Danish. Oh, no, it's not necessary. Breakfast is on the house for the team anyway. Oh, then you work at the resort? Cindy, didn't you notice his shoulder patch? He's the captain of the ski patrol team. Oh, really? <laughs> is that like being an instructor? Oh, boy. Hey, miss, you've been a real day brightener. My name's Cindy. Cindy Markick. I'm a flatlander from Miami. And this is my roommate, Lisa Adams. We're DU students. Lisa's father is in oil. Uh, I have never seen this girl before in my life. <laughs> well, I'm Skip Blanchard. And, uh, ladies, it has been a real pleasure. Sorry about your Danish. <laughs> See you on the slopes? Only if she breaks a leg, right, Skip? Hey, Skip. <laughs> Goodbye, ladies. I think I found my golden boy, Lisa. He's a little older than I expected. Man, have we got trouble. The whiteout? Yeah, Red says the whiteout's a bowling ball knocking down ten pins. It's dumping snow at the rate of four inches an hour. Oh, no. Headed for us? Yep. Dead center. <laughs> this Father's Day with exciting menswear and popular accessories. We've got quite a lineup of values, each a sure winner for Dad. Find complete looks he'll wear to work, out to dinner, to the tennis court, or the baseball game. Plus extras from ties to t-shirts, robes to wallets, underwear basics to belts. We've hit all the bases at prices you'll like. So put Dad on Sears Father's Day team, and he'll know you're no rookie when it comes to gift selection. Sometimes choosing a Father's Day gift almost requires an executive decision. But at Sears, I found the solution with hardly any effort at all. The lightweight executive attache case. The man at Sears says it's their number one bestseller. And I knew Dad would go for its great fashion looks in black or brown. This four-inch molded attache is durable, strong, and lightweight to help Dad weather those trips to and from work. The executive attache for Father's Day from Sears. Nothing but the best for my dad. Like Sears Best Double Knit Slacks on sale for Father's Day. Regular cut slacks are just $13.99. That's $4 off. Choose popular solids and refined patterns in wrinkle-resistant double knit for Trell polyester. Top off his day with Sears Best Short Sleeve Knit Sports Shirts. Also at $4 off. Now just $9.99. It's Sears Best for the best guy I know, Dad. Sale ends June 16th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears. Sears Retail Stores. A swirling whiteout rages out of the northern Rockies, dumping snow at the frenzied rate of four inches an hour. Should the blizzard's 60-mile-per-hour winds lock in on the warm air mass surrounding the Keyhole Basin Ski Resort, 
the added snow weight would trigger the resort's one avalanche slope in a mere four hours. Uh, I'd have a seat, gentlemen. Now, what's this bad news from the National Weather Service, Skip? A whiteout is headed for Keyhole Basin, Mr. Haverly. I'd like your permission to delay operation on all our lifts until the whiteout danger passes. Well, this is an early morning eye-opener, even for an old man like me. Oh, I think a whiteout would open any ski resort owner's eyes, Mr. Haverly. No, no, no. I was referring to Skip's suggestion to close the lifts, John. Now, what is the whiteout's ETA? An hour at the outside with a 40-minute variable. Well... Means Keyhole Basin skiers could sandwich in two runs very comfortably before this whiteout arrives. Or they could be trapped on the slopes if the whiteout hits early. Now, oh, people pay good money to ski my resort. Mr. Haverly, this whiteout is dropping snow at the rate of four inches an hour. That means the avalanche on the mall between the barrel run experts and beginner's slopes could slide in a few hours. Hmm. Well, all right. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll cancel all ski lessons scheduled on the mall until you can update your avalanche watch tomorrow. Well, th that's a good first step. Now, you understand, Keyhole Basin's reputation is at stake. My lifts run until the very last minute before this whiteout hits. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Come on, John. We'll clear the mall instruction field ourselves. <laughs> The lift line moves so fast. Our early start out of Denver has its benefits. Lisa, something white is falling out of the sky. Fresh powder, all right. I thought people skied after it snowed. Fresh powder's a skier's dream. A third chair up is ours. Uh, speaking of dreams, there must be some other way for me to meet Skip on the beginner's slope, <laughs> besides breaking my leg. It's not very likely. If Skip has the day off from the ski patrol team, he'll probably be skiing the expert slope. Here's a lift chair. Hang on to your equipment. Up we go! <laughs> this is a guess! <laughs> I'll bet if it wasn't snowing so hard, we'd have a nice view. Well, check out this skier in the yellow park up below us. Look at him rip over those moguls. Lisa! I hope I don't embarrass you later when I need help from the ski patrol team. <laughs> the ski patrol team was set up to protect skiers' lives. And Captain Skip Blanchard is just the man I want protecting mine. You make a fool of yourself up there on the slopes and I will abandon you. Hey, can't you tell when I'm kidding? <laughs> no. <laughs> Ugh, this wind's freezing. How long before we reach the beginner's slope? Uh, this section of Keyhole Basin is called the Barrel Run. The ski lift will carry us over the Barrel Run expert slope across an instruction field nicknamed the Mall because it's so flat, and then onto the beginner's slope. Ugh! The wind's rocking the lift chair so hard I can hardly hold on. Well, you better hang on. You're looking at a 40-foot drop below us. Uh, the wind whips the snow. It stings my face. The snow is blowing it in waves like, like surf pounding on a beach. I can't see where we're going. My hands are numb from the cold. Ah! Oh, I'm slipping. You hang on. Oh, the wind's pitching me right off the lift chair. Oh, there. Below us, the slope. We made it to the top. Oh, get ready. Jump! Oh, I think I'm just going to love skiing. Oh, I've never seen such horrible conditions as this. Oh, for a minute back there, I thought I was going to be blown off the lift chair. The lift chairs have stopped running. The wind is batting the lift chairs around like tethered ping pong balls. Oh. Hey, what's happening? Oh, we're caught in a blizzard, I guess. Ladies, the storm has shut down all the lifts. Skiers are requested to leave the expert slope and return to the lodge. Oh. Did you say expert slope? Yeah, this is the expert slope. Oh, now don't panic, Cindy. But I don't know how to ski. You're the lift attendant. Uh, tell them to start up the lift chair so I can get down. We're in the middle of a whiteout. The lifts can't run in these winds. This is my second time skiing. How do you expect me to get down the expert slope? Well, under the circumstances, any way you can. <sighs> Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. Like the wind, we feel its effect, but we cannot see it. It touches each and every one of us without exception. Young or old, rich or poor, black or white. 
and something we all have in common, tension. When we are unable to cope with tension, it can turn against us. It can make us fail at our jobs, fail our families, and most important, fail ourselves. Learning to cope with tension is a never-ending process, one that begins at birth and continues to the end of life. It's one of the keys to happiness and good mental health in our time. This is Cliff Robertson. There are few of us who wouldn't welcome solid advice from a good friend on how to deal more effectively with our tensions. That friend can be your mental health association. Contact them for a copy of their pamphlet, How to Deal with Your Tensions. Chills run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. Hush, hush, my darling. Your mother is taking care of all of you. You have nothing to fear. Let those who move against us learn to cower in terror. As long as the moon is full, we rule the nights. Ours is the power and the glory. You will inherit the world, and I am your queen in whatever guise I choose to cloak myself. Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of the CBS Radio Network stations. Imagine you're on your second ski trip ever. The lift chair carries you above the ski slopes when suddenly a biting wind pitches you from side to side, threatening to spill you 40 feet to the ground. The pelting snow stings your face. It's all you can do to hang onto your lift chair. Then out of the blinding snow, you finally see the crest of the slope. Equipment intact, your partner helps you land on the slope on your skis. The wind howls around your ears as the ski lift attendant tells you you are on the expert's slope. The storm has shut down all the ski lifts. On your second time skiing, in zero visibility and biting cold, how would you get down the expert slope? I'm sorry, but you'll have to leave this lift site. It's company orders. Even in picture? Postcard perfect weather. My friend couldn't possibly ski down the expert slope. You can't force her off the lift side in a blizzard. The wind's so loud I can't hear myself think. We're in a whiteout condition. You see my windbreak over there? You mean that box? Your windbreak is smaller than a phone booth. You ladies squeeze inside. I'll stand outside and explain the situation to you. Okay. I'll go in first. Lisa, this windbreak is the size of a coffin standing on edge. Oh, 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 it's nice to get out of the wind, though. I'm still oh. freezing. Now, look, uh, you'll both freeze pretty soon if you remain on the lift side. Your friend is shivering. Rub your hands, Cindy. My hands went numb. Back on the lift chair. Snow drinks Miami like it has plague. Never visits us there. Look, I'm wearing thermals with two uh, pairs of sweat socks and waterproof uh, snow boots. My job is to stick by this walkie-talkie and report any damage to the lifts. Now, you ladies are wearing ski boots. The wind chill factor will take your feet first up here. I'm willing to take my chances on the lift chair. No, no, the, the lift chairs are out. You'll have to walk down. Uh, oh. Carry your skis down the slope. <laughs> it's too steep. <laughs> Look, I don't want to frighten you, but your friend had better start moving around. Build up her circulation. I know what you're saying is right, but there must be some other way for her to get down the expert slope. All right. Take the back trail down. It isn't as steep after the first quarter of the way down as this side of the expert slope. Okay. Now stick to the trees until you reach the instruction field. They call it the mall. Uh -huh. Real flat looking. You'll know it when you see it. Ready? Do I have a choice, Lisa? No. 
Look, I'll notify the ski patrol of your route on my walkie-talkie. You'll get your rescue wish after all, Cindy. I didn't want Skip coming after me this way. You girls are friends of Skip Blanchard? Yeah. Tell him the girl who stepped on his Danish in the coffee shop is scared out of her wits. If that doesn't bring him running, tell him my father's in who's who, and we'll pay him a fantastic reward for my rescue. Oh, come on. <laughs> be a total loss. Maybe I'll get a date with Skip out of this. We're stranded in a driving blizzard and all you got on your mind is a date with a captain of the ski patrol team. I'm just trying to keep my priorities straight. Lisa, how will Skip find us in this blizzard? I'm not sure he can. <laughs> Skip, you uh, take yours black, right? Yep. Thanks, John. Mr. Wade? Uh, black's fine with me. Oh. So, fill me in on the gory details, Mr. Wade. Well, <laughs> nothing to romanticize. It happened on a mogul at the end of a long line of link turns. I hit an ice patch. The wind must have scraped the surface clean of powder. Next thing I know, I can't grip my right ski pole. A broken hand makes it tough to grip anything. Indeed. I know my hand is going to feel so good when it stops hurting. A ton of snow falling outside, and I managed to hit an ice patch. It's embarrassing. Oh, we're the ones who are embarrassed. Yeah, some help we are. You break your hand and then have to ski a mile for help. The doctor should be back at the infirmary soon. We had to help him move a woman with a broken hip off the dogbird run. Well, what do I need a doctor for? You did a fine job setting my splint, Skip. When I'm 62, I sure hope I'm in the kind of physical condition you are, Mr. Wade. <laughs> well, I have to admit, I'm, I'm proud of being well-preserved. Barrel run X to ski patrol one. Excuse me. You go ahead with your work, young man. Just leave me to moan in peace. It's the lift attendant on Barrel Run's expert slope. I haven't checked in with him since we cleared the mall. Barrel run X. Barrel run X, this is Skip Blanchard. Move inside your windbreak, please. Your transmission is awful. Repeat, it's awful. I am inside my windbreak. Last two skiers left my lift site about an hour ago. Had a little trouble. Well, what trouble? Over. Two girls, beginners, said they were friends of yours, Skip. A flighty blonde, uh, Cindy something. Said you met her over at Danish this morning. Oh, my... Yes, I remember. Well, what kind of trouble did the girls give you? I had to send them down the southern route. The southern route? That'll be on the avalanche slope. Greg, the southern route leads to the mall. I know. I figured they could ski part of the way back after they reached the bottom of the mall. Were you aware the mall lies directly in the avalanche path? It borders the tree line on the southern route. Are you telling me the whiteout could trigger that avalanche? Yes. You said they left an hour ago? Over an hour ago now. Well, did they plan to attempt to ski down the southern route? No. The girls planned on carrying their skis down the slope. Oh, then they're still on the slope, Skip. We'll have to search for them. I'm going down the southern route. I'm going after them before they step into the avalanche field. Well, stick to the trees on the outskirt of the avalanche path. The snow is falling so fast you could trigger an avalanche above them if you're not careful. Okay. Skipper, this is Mr. Hamerly. I heard the barrel run attendant's report. Are those girls in any serious avalanche danger? The faster snow accumulates, the greater the avalanche hazard. The danger rate is one inch an hour. This whiteout is dumping snow at four times that rate. Well, you gotta find those girls, Skip, and bring them in safely. I'll come down from above them, Mr. Haverly. I'm leaving now. Very good, Greg. Now, Skip, use snowmobiles. It'll make it faster going up the mall slope. No, snowmobiles are too loud. The fresh snow has added a lot of weight on that slope. The motor vibration could trigger the avalanche. Well, then, how do you expect to reach those girls? 
John and I are going to cross country up the mall slope. Hopefully, we'll spot the girls in the blizzard. All right. Now, you take your walkie-talkie and call for help if you need it. By God, you keep me posted. <laughs> is waiting on you. You've lagged behind ever since we started down the slope. You shouldn't expect blisters from a pampered princess. Oh, excuse me. I forgot I was skiing with an Arabian princess. I'm cold. My fingers and toes are throbbing. They feel swollen. Sandy, I'm cold too. But the only place... We're gonna get warm. He's back at the lodge. Oh, we can only see through this blizzard. We might be able to ski the rest of the way down the slope. Oh, it'll be faster. I think asking me to ski in the middle of a blizzard is a bit much for my second time out. Why hasn't someone found us? Oh, your ski patrol captain? Skip would be nice. But right now, I'd settle for Smokey the Bear if he could lead us back to the ski lodge. We either move or freeze to death. Ready? You lead, Admiral Bird. Pick up your skis, then. Oh, the snow falls and falls. I feel blind. You're a blur and you're walking right beside me. <laughs> it's psychologically suffocating. Did I ever tell you I was claustrophobic? <laughs> Stop making me laugh, but I'm trying to frighten myself. It's blowing me backwards. <laughs> Enough! Enough snow! Sears wants to break the ice when it comes to buying a Kenmore refrigerator. So we're taking 50 to $100 off three models through June 30th. You save $100 on the 19 cubic foot side-by-side -side and $70 on the 17 cubic foot top freezer refrigerator. Both have automatic ice makers and Sears exclusive humid drawer. Save $50 on a Kenmore 17 cubic foot refrigerator freezer without ice maker. All are frostless. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. My dad's power hungry because he's anxious to tackle new projects with power tools for Father's Day. At Sears, find super values in a Craftsman reversible drill, saber saw with manual scroller, and dual action pad sander, each at $20 savings, now just $29.99. And check Sears heavy duty router with case at $43 savings, based on regular separate prices in Sears current power hand tool catalog. So this Father's Day, let Craftsman satisfy your power hungry dad while you save money at Sears. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Is that eggnog you're drinking? Mm-hmm. In June? Sure. And after this, I'm going to Sears to wrap myself in a fall coat. What? At the preseason coat layaway at Sears, I'll save 25% on any coat I choose. Preseason or last year's leftovers? Mm-mm. All our fall 1979 styles. And a deposit holds my coat until October 1st, 1979. Save 25% during Sears preseason coat layaway sale, now at most Sears retail stores. Sale ends June 23rd. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Richard Widmark again, and here's the concluding act of Whiteout. We've reached the outer edge of the instruction field. The mall ends here, Skip. Then this point is where the avalanche field begins. The avalanche path extends 20 yards on both sides of us to the trees and funnels up the back side of the expert slope. Did you ever see this avalanche roll? Yeah, last year. Devastating. I hope those two girls up on the slope stick to the trees. Someone's trying to raise us on the walkie-talkie, John. Oh, uh, here. You take the talkie. Nobody ever wants to speak to me anyway. This is Ski Patrol 1. Over. You sound like you're caught in the middle of a typhoon, Skip. Oh, it's worse, Mr. Haverly. It's a whiteout. Well, any sign of those two young ladies? Negative. 
The wind whips the snow around like a sandstorm. We have little better than zero visibility. Skip! This is Greg! Greg! Where's your position? I'm in the trees about a quarter of the way down the backside of the expert slope. Well, that's good. You stick to the tree line. Crossing the avalanche field that high up on the slope could bring it down on the rest of us. This is Mr. Haverly. I'm speaking from the lodge. Now, I want those girls found, but not at the risk of your own lives. Now, you're using your head up there. Mr. Haverly, the three of us are already risking our lives. Scamp, I found a ski pole, but I can't be certain it belongs to those girls. Well, let's hope it does. A lost pole would force them to stick to the trees coming down the slope. I probably explained what's taking those girls so long to get down the slope. They must have wasted time hunting for the lost ski pole. I think this blizzard explains their delay, Mr. Haverly. Skip's not kidding. The wind and snow are unbelievable up on this part of the slope. I can see five, six feet ahead of me, no more. Well, you work your way slowly down that slope, Greg. I don't want you passing those girls. <laughs> Slow is the only way down. The trees are pretty dense up here. You have to check each step. John and I will start fishtailing our way up to you, Greg. Keep your walkie-talkie line open. You men now, holler good and loud when you spot those girls. I don't want to be getting the dark on this thing. I'm worried sick. Roger. <laughs>
But I lost my pole. We only have three ski poles. Oh, this slop is a piece of cake for me. I can handle it with only one pole. Okay. <laughs> I'm game. Well, so after you get your skis on, we'll take the center of the slope down. That way, we should be far enough away from the trees to find a clear trail. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Patrol one, this is Greg, over. We read you, Greg, over. Skip, I've spotted them. Thank God, wait from hell down here at the lodge. Mr. Haverly, please keep off the band. Yeah, where are they, Greg? On the edge of the tree line. The girls are putting on their skis. They're going to ski down the last third of the avalanche field. You gotta stop them. Here's what I want you to do, Greg. Move out of the trees. John and I are moving out now. Y you should be able to see our red and yellow parkers through light snow. Holler when you see us. John, can you see the girls? No, no, not from this angle. Greg, we can't see the girls from down here. I see your position, Skip. The girls are closer to you than they are to me. They're roughly 300 yards up from you. Skip, the girls just skied into the avalanche field. But John and I will move into the avalanche field. We'll try to flag them back into the trees. They're zigzagging real slow across the slope. I think I can catch them. Is that safe, Skip? Well, we're gonna find out the hard way. Greg just entered the avalanche field. Let's go! <laughs> oh, I'm shaky on these skis. You're doing fine, Cindy. <laughs> oh, Lisa, I see two skiers ahead of us. Hey, they're waving at us. I see them. I think they're waving us toward the trees. Why? I don't know. We'll find out in a minute. <laughs> We're almost on top of them. Hey! Hey, there's another skier behind us. Run for the trees! Huh? Get for the trees! The trees! Yes! Yeah. Move, Cindy! This is an avalanche field! Too late! The avalanche oh. is coming down the slope. Well, how do we do? <laughs> I can't see Greg. Oh. I think he's caught the avalanche. The avalanche is going to catch us, too. Oh. Off your poles! Oh. Kick off your skis! The avalanche sweeps you under. You can suffocate! Oh. Here it comes! Oh. Oh. I'm sinking down into the snow! Cindy! Oh. Release! You're finding Cindy! Your skis will drag you under the avalanche! Swim! Swim! Play your arms through the oh. snow like you're in water! Cindy! I can't find my fighting release! Oh. Where's Skip? Oh, he, he's buried under the snow. Oh, no. No, there he is behind you. Oh, <laughs> look at you. You look like a snowman. Well, you're, you're a little white yourself. Is it over? <laughs> it's all, folks. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Where's Greg? Oh, Greg? Oh, Greg? 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 Up here in the tree. Oh. Oh, he's the only smart one. <laughs> That's where we were waving you to. Oh, I thought you were waving because you were happy to see me, Skip. Oh, well, I, I am happy to see you. But so will the owner of Keyhole Basin when we get back to the lodge. What's the owner's name? Mr. Haverly. I have a few choice words on safety precaution from Mr. Haverly. <laughs> Skip said he'd carry me on his back up the slopes. I wouldn't accept his <laughs> offer. Dinner is different. Oh, I just wish you didn't prod John into asking me to double with you and Skip. I feel embarrassed. Maybe John really doesn't want to take me out tonight. Oh, of course he does. I saw John giving you the eye. 
I just helped him speak his mind, that's all. Mm. Here, let me have your skis. I'll lock them on the ski rack. Excuse me, you ladies through skiing for the day? Uh, yes, but mm. I don't think you can call what we did today skiing. It was more like roller coaster riding. <laughs> see, the ski lifts are running again, and my friend and I were wondering if we could have your ski lift tickets. You have no idea how horrible the conditions are up on the slopes today. The wind turned all the slopes into one big sheet of ice. Still overcast. You could be caught in a blizzard like we were. Oh, far out. Sounds like a real challenge. A real test of ability up there today. Are you guys for real? Here, take our lift tickets. Let them find out for themselves, Cindy. <laughs> We've had enough skiing for one day, right? <laughs> you said it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sears National Sporting Goods Week, featuring super values like the Sears Best Hillary Family Size Tent. Now $50 off, only $199.99. This is the tent tested and approved by the first man to conquer Mount Everest, Sir Edmund Hillary. It's 10 by 14 feet, sleeps eight adults comfortably, and most people can stand up anywhere inside. You save $50 on Sears Best Hillary Tent, only $199.99 through June 16th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Nothing but the best for my dad. Like Sears Best Sport Shirts, now just $9.99. Save $4 on each. Great Father's Day gifts. And these short sleeve sport shirts in solid their stripes are specially knit, so they're comfortable next to the skin, neat looking to the rest of the world. Complete the gift with Sears Best Double Knit Slacks, also $4 off. Regular cut slacks, now just $13.99. It's Sears Best for the best guy I know, Dad. Say ends June 16th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Summer is the time to enjoy the most with the least, like jogging shorts cut up to there and tops trimmed for action at Sears. Misses save 20% on tank tops, only $4.80 each, and jogger shorts, $3.99. Sale ends June 20th. Juniors, run in for special purchases on colorful go-with-everything tube tops, $2.99 each. T-shirt tops are $3.99, and jogging racer shorts, only $4.99. A special purchase, though not reduced, is an exceptional value. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Whiteout was written by Bruce Martin. Produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Richard Widmark. Our stars were Joan McCall and Linda K. Henning. Featured in the cast were Tommy Cook, Vic Perrin, Shepard Menken, Tom Brown, and Herb Ellis. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollefson. Mark Trella is production supervisor. And the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. <laughs> and I'm an actor and I'm proud of it. I've played many roles from Shakespeare to the Fonz. And right now I'm playing what I consider a significant spokesman role for the American Cancer Society. We're inviting you to join our cast of millions, the millions of Americans who are playing a role in the fight against cancer. Scientists in research laboratories, the people helping cancer patients with rehabilitation and other services, many of them former cancer patients themselves. All those volunteers playing an important role, ringing doorbells to help raise the funds needed to bring about a happy ending to our centuries-old drama, the war against cancer. That's your role. Act. Send a generous check now to your American Cancer Society. It's not a small part. As Shakespeare said, many strokes, though with a little axe, felled the hardest timbered oak. Remember, it's your American Cancer Society. You've changed, Bernard. You're not the man I married. What do you mean, Francine? Remember the way you were, vulnerable. You made mistakes. But now, look, you're confident. Everything you do turns out right. It's that book you sent away for.
It's just a catalog mm. from the Consumer Information Center. It lists more than 200 federal publications you can send for on building, fixing, eating... Buying, selling, working, playing, living... And more than half of them are free. Yes, Francine, the man you married is gone for good. Mm. All right, Bernard. But would you make just one more mistake for old time's sake? All right. For you, oh. I'll just replace that window glass like I used to. Whatever you do, learn to do it better. Send for your free catalog. Just write Consumer Catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. Francine, send for their publication on first aid. What was that address? Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. Next Monday, Sears Radio Theater will be a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Let's listen. Now stop moving this way and put down the axe. Why should I, Mr. Marshall Blodgett? Let me give you two good reasons, Smith. First reason over here in my left hand is Mr. Winchester. Second reason over here in my right hand, meet Mr. Colt. So be sure and tune in next Monday to the Sears Radio Theater.